What's going on guys? This is Damien from The Lookout and welcome to our How to Play Beast Gohan Guide. Yes, we are back with our guide series, our How to Plays and now we're picking off where we stopped and that is with Beast Gohan. So guys, this one is... well, you will see. You will see what this one is like. But before we begin this video, huge shout out to the Coffee Club, our lovely patrons, our $2 and up patrons who buy us coffee and they keep us going and eventually we will replace the old table. So yeah, thank you guys so much for supporting us. If you wish to join the Coffee Club, link to the Patreon is in the description below. And yeah, I think that's it. Roll the video! As with all of our videos, let's start with a breakdown. So, we will give you an archetype breakdown, we'll show you lines of play, interactions, you will see our deck list, and then we will take you through the first three turns of the game, and then we'll just wrap it up with a summary. Let's go! Let's start with the leader. Here he is, Sun Gohan 10k Red Saiyan. Extremely important that this is a Red Saiyan leader. And you know, much like Gohan after the Cell Saga, he's just kind of exceptionally mediocre. He's just exceptionally mediocre. Uh, when he attacks, he draws one, which is bad. Like, which is really bad, because now we're seeing more and more leaders, which can just draw as activate main, so on your first turn you can still draw. Gohan can't do that. Draw an attack is the bare minimum, and in current Dragon Ball, it's not even good. Uh, however, you will always be able to awaken on turn 2, and then you get to draw 2. So you kinda compensate for the loss on draw on the first turn, by drawing 2 always on turn 2 when you awaken. Though, like, activate main, that would have been better. Activate main would have been better, however, Let's check out his Awakened side. On the Awakened side, his Son Gohan unfaltering power and this, this is an upgrade. Do an upgrade above bare minimum, but still an upgrade. You now draw when you attack, but not just when you attack. When any Red Son Gohan superhero or Piccolo superhero attacks, you draw a card. So once per turn. This basically means that you don't need to attack with your leader to draw, which is awesome. You also have the ability to restand your blockers at the end of the turn. One blocker, one of your piccolos, all of them have blocker, it's fine. And then auto once per turn, and this is the big payoff for the deck. This is the big payoff. When your piccolo power beyond awakening activates a blocker skill or is removed from the battle area by an opponent's skill at the, at the end of the turn, Add cards from your life to your hand until you have 4 lives left and play your Z leader on top of Sun Gohan. You play your Z leader lightning fast. Lightning fast. And your Z leader. Guys, your Z leader. Wow. Let's check it out. Here is your Z leader, Sun Gohan Awakening to Beast. Now, ignoring the artwork, this one is awesome. He is awesome. 20k double strike baseline. That's great. Z awaken for 2 red energy. Ignore. Ignore that. This is never gonna happen. And then auto. First auto. He has 3 of them. If you place 1 card from your Z energy in your drop, when this card is played, you place your special beam cannon Z extra card from your Z deck into the battle area. Then, when he attacks, you draw one, and finally, at the end of the turn, choose all of your red piccolo superheroes, all of your blockers, and switch them to active mode. Now, um, yeah, when you compare this to other Z leaders, it's exceptionally lackluster. Until you figure out what you can actually do with it, and how stupid defensive this deck is. Which is crazy, because you would imagine that this Gohan is just all offense. But actually, it's extremely defensive. This is what I'm talking about. Here is what makes Gohan Beast such an exceptionally good Z leader on defense. On defense. So, a 20k baseline power is hard to overcome, but Red Saiyans have access to King Vegeta's imposing presence, 
and Unending Awakening. Unending Awakening basically negates the attack and then it for one energy you negate the attack and then you give your leader plus 5k for the turn. When you do this on your opponent's turn, you just negate their first attack. Uh, Gohan is now 25k baseline. 25. 20 is already hard to overcome. Becoming 25 for the entire turn. In the game where most attacks now range somewhere in the like 20k zone. 20 to 25. And even if they are 25, you know it's still not as common. You have 30 plus, but those are boss monsters. So just becoming 25k for the turn is phenomenal. You can also do the same with King Vegeta's imposing presence because he negs your opponent's, uh, your opponent's uh, attackers by minus 5k, which is basically almost the same as giving you plus 5k in defense. So yeah, this is why the leader is so good. I'm not sold on its, uh, on its uh, offensive potential, but defensively, 25k. That's insane. That's just insane. Let's check out the Z extra cards. You have two of them. First one is the one that you need to awaken. Battle with Red Ribbon Army. Uh, there's a lot of text here to basically just say, hey... It helps you awaken, it plays one of your guys, it puts Pan in opponent's battle area and then his other roto is basically, hey, look for Piccolo and then like when you play a Piccolo, look for other Piccolo that you need to Z awaken. That's basically everything that this card does and there's a lot of text just to say that. But yeah, this is what this card does. Now you have the other Z extra card, Special Beam Cannon, Inherited Power. Activate battle for one red. Your red Gohan superhero card is attacking and you, you remove it from the game. So it only works with Gohan superhero cards, red ones. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with 35k or less power, ignoring barrier and KO it. First off, before we read anything else, this is massive. This is massive because red doesn't have barrier removal. Red has the old SSB Kaioken Goku and that's basically everything that you get. So just for one energy, and that one cannot kill something that's 35k. So for one energy, you can just KO a card with 35k power or less. That alone makes it worth to run this card. But then you also get additional things. You can choose between two. First option. Choose up to one of your red Sun Gohan superhero Z leaders and it gets plus 20k for the battle and then remove it from the game at the end of your turn. So uh, you have your Z leader for one swing and that's it. So you better make sure that this is the swing that kills your opponent. But it will be because you're 40k double strike. And because it's activate battle it means yeah, that your opponent hasn't negated the attack. And then the other option is choose up to one of your Red Sun Gohan superhero cards with an original power of 30 or more and it gets plus 15k and double strike for the battle. Uh, this is for your boss monster. Uh, the boss monster is really really bad. We will talk about this later. However, uh, the, my evaluation of this card is that this card is just phenomenal simply because one energy KO something ignoring barrier in red. That's massive. And then it can push for the game. Like this card is amazing. Speaking of boss monster, this one is your boss monster and <laughs> I mean he is disappointing, completely disappointing. Here's what he, here's what he does. Um, dual attacker 30k, zero protection. No protection whatsoever. If you play this versus yellow, you just kind of lost. Not that you lost, but you just kind of spent two energy to do nothing. Uh, auto limit one. If you have the special beam cannon in your battle area and this card is attacking, when your opponent activates a counter skill, choose up to one of their leaders and it gets minus 5k for the turn. This sounds good. But it's not. 
like I'm not saying that it isn't good. The problem is lots of counters now are just floodgates. So if I play Robotic Repost, which says that whenever you are attacking, you have to switch something to rest mode and I negate your attack because this skill doesn't negate the counter. So basically you will swing, I will negate you, I will say you have to now rest a card whenever you swing at me. I don't really care that I got minus 5k because like, okay, it's fine, it's okay, because then you'll just have to keep paying even more, and you're probably not going to do that. So uh, yeah, that's that's the issue. That's really not the best. And then he has activate main limit one for two red energy. If your leader is a red Saiyan and you have four or more energy, Play this card from your hand and choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and give it minus 30k for the turn. This is okay. Uh, it's good removal. It's not super helpful against non-barrier, I mean against barrier cards. And there's a solid amount of them. So uh, yeah, when it comes to this Gohan, although incredibly cool, because it is Beast Gohan, it's just so lackluster it's so lackluster so yeah you will be running a different boss monster in this deck trust me the last thing that you need to understand about this deck before we dive into turns breakdown is the chain don't worry our boss monster might not be good but the deck has a phenomenal chain of attackers the deck has an exceptionally good chain of attackers much like blue gohan you can swing a whole bunch of times on low energy by cheating your cards for cheap and or for free. Like you will be attacking like crazy in this deck. Maybe not as good as the blue one, but you will be attacking like crazy. Here is our deck list guys, uh, don't worry. If you are from NA, you might be thinking, oh my god, this is exceptionally expensive. You can basically replace the majority of these cards with some other semi-generic good red cards so this is just this is just an example don't worry it's not a 300 dollar deck you can really build this one for much cheaper anyway um you are we are missing three cards and uh, this is because by the time that i made this deck list z extra cards weren't implemented in deck planet they're implemented now and the z extra cards will be in the final deck list don't worry. If you wish to check this decklist out in more details, link to the decklist is in the description below. So yeah, let's jump into the turn breakdown. Let's start with the mole again. So here are some of the cards that you would like to have. Uh, you need pen because you have no turn one plays in this deck. You really have nothing that costs one energy. So it's okay to grab a pen. Uh, get yourself one of these Gohans. You will need it. You will need one of these Gohans. And then for the final card, uh, this is usually always an open slot. So the first two cards are the ones that you actually really need. The third one is just kind of an open slot, but what you want to get is Omega Shenron. Get Omega Shenron. This is the better boss monster. This is the one that you will actually be playing not the very bad, very average Gohan boss monster. This one. This one is phenomenal and it works with your leader. Yes, it actually works with your leader. And you will be even more defensive once you get this guy out. Like, this guy is amazing. Now, let's check out our turn breakdown. Let's check out your first three turns. Gohan is an amazing mid-range deck. It's not really control. It's definitely not aggro. But I would say that it's a mid-range deck. You have explosive turns 3, like turns 2 and 3. And uh, you have amazing defensive tools after that. After you have Z Awoken, you have amazing defensive tools. Your first two turns are basically always the same, but there is some variety after turn 2. We'll be showing you the first three turns with this deck. As always, we'll be using the provided decklist and we're also assuming that you went first and that you have kept 
the name that you have kept the mulligan that we have shown you. All right, it's time to unleash the beast. Turn 1, a very basic setup for awakening on turn 2. Here is your basic turn 1, so you start, charge 1, pay 1, play pan, look at top 5, grab a superhero battle card, something that you're missing, shuffle the deck and then pass the turn. Like, this is the most basic turn 1 possible, and keep in mind that on your opponent's turn you will charge pan into Z energy, because you need one Z energy to play your first Z extra card. Turn 2, it is time to awaken. How do we awaken? It's actually very simple. So start, pay 1 and 1 Z energy to pay your Z extra card. It's auto will trigger, playing you the free cost Gohan, and then you will search the deck and KO a card. Also what happens is that Pan is played on your opponent's side of the field, which fulfills your awakening condition, which means that now it is time to awaken, you awaken, you draw two cards, and then you attack and you draw one. Now you have one energy left. Just one energy. What do you do with it? Well, uh, if you're missing some cards, you can play Pan. If you need pressure, if you really need to pressure your opponent a bit more, you can play Broly, if you have Broly. And uh, if you're really feeling confident that your opponent will not mess up your chain, you can play Piccolo. If you're really feeling confident that you can either get Piccolo to survive or that you can play Piccolo on your next turn and get your chain going all over again. You have multiple options, each for a different scenario. Turn 3, your big explosive turn. Okay, let's go. So start, charge 1, attack with the free cost, leaders auto triggers, you draw 1. After the attack, you basically pay 1 to play the 4 cost. 4 cost has an auto which triggers to switch into active mode, draw a card and play Piccolo 4 cost with his skills negated for the turn. You play Piccolo from your deck, you shuffle the deck. Then because Piccolo entered the play, your Z extra cards auto triggers, you search the deck for the 5 cost Piccolo and you remove the Z extra card. You get your 5 cost Piccolo and then you shuffle your deck. Now you attack with your Gohan, attack resolves, you attack with Piccolo, attack resolves, then you pay you 1 to play the 5 cost, his auto triggers, restands, draws 1, gets plus 5k, then you swing with your Piccolo, his attack resolves, then you swing with your leader, his attack resolves, and now you're left with one energy. What do we do with this one energy? Well, you can either grab and negate for extra defense on the following turn, or if you're really feeling confident, you can just play Broly in swing critical at your opponent. You have multiple options. I like saving a one energy negate, depending on the deck that I'm playing against, but if you're feeling exceptionally confident, you can just play Broly. Now let's talk about Z Awakening, because now it's your opponent's turn. Piccolo restands at the end of your turn, then the following happens. Your opponent attacks, you say no counters, just block with Piccolo, and then your leader is gonna trigger. And at the end of the turn, you will Z Awaken. You should always Z Awaken on this turn, but keep in mind that your leader says that you Z Awaken at the end of the turn. So you still need to survive somehow. That's why that 1 negate is so good. You can just make your leader baseline 20, for example. Because you still need to survive one more opponent's turn and then things become crazy and you're super defensive for the rest of the game. What happens now? What happens when you're turn 4 and like turn 5 and so onward? Well, going forward, your playstyle will be pressuring with your Z leader and battle cards, because your Z leader is huge, he's 20k double strike, and you have the Z extra card which can just threaten lethal in combination with your Z leader, and then using one of your counters to go back to, ba to baseline 25k during your opponent's turn. Not too exciting, but very effective. Unless your opponent swings with a 30k attacker, they will most of the time have to combo with at least one card to get to 25k power. Uh, there's a lot of 20ks, there's a lot of 30ks, but sometimes 25k is, you know, kind of number that 
not too many cards have. So your opponent will most of the time either have to swing with a 30k or he will have to swing with a 20k and commit one card to get to 25k. This puts you in a massive advantage, massive advantage. Once you're 25k, it's so, so difficult to take you down. And if they're swinging with like single strike attacks, that slows the game even further. Because if a single one of them gets through, it's kind of just like one damage. It's not the end of the world. So yeah, like you have seen, you can cheat in a lot of cards, either for free or for one energy. This will help a lot. Uh, this will help you put on the pressure. This will help a lot during your turns. And yeah, that's basically Gohan. Before we end the video, let's jump into the summary. Gohan Beast looks like a great red deck. A great defensive red deck. However, keep in mind, when I say a great red deck, a lot of red decks look like great red decks. That doesn't make them meta decks. Uh, the deck is super consistent and it has amazing defense. Sadly, the boss monster is very bad. The boss monster is awful. So you will have to rely on other generic red cards instead. Like Sin, when you have a 20k double strike baseline leader and you have the Sin Omega Sin boss monster out, you just decimate your opponent. Like, it's much better than a guy with zero protection, which does nothing. I highly advise using other boss monsters, as the lack of any protection on Gohan Beast really, really hurts. If you're playing against yellow, that card basically doesn't do anything. It just flat out doesn't do anything. And yellow is pretty popular. Uh, you start slow, but after you see Awaken, you will be in a massive advantage over your opponent. You'll be in a massive advantage. It's a fun and simple deck to play. It's great for new players. It's, you know, it's not the aggro, destroy everything red deck, but it's simple and it's fun. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. That's it for the video. Let me know in the comments below. Are you hyped for Gohan Beast? Guys, are you hyped for this deck? Let me know. Do you think that this deck is good? Do you think that this is the next best red deck? Do you think that it's actually even worse than I've said in the video? Let me know in the comments below. Guys, we are back with how to play guides. Brawl is coming out tomorrow and then we're catching up with other colors. So get ready for a sea of Dragon Ball content. It's gonna be amazing. Before we leave, guys, don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments below. I read all of your comments and try to respond to everything. I really love our little community. It means the world to me. Thanks, guys, for being so awesome. And uh, yeah, that's it. This has been Damien from The Lookout, and I'll see all of you in the next video.